Hey everyone, so more Selenium action today and on the night episode we are going to see how we can display the results right after our bot was able to grab all the necessary info from the booking website. So now that we have the results on our hand, then we need to understand how to manipulate the data inside the results page. And that is going to be challenging because the data manipulation in here is not so easy and we also look to display all the data in a nice table in the console. And I also hope that this episode will add something new to your Python skills. So let's get started. Alright, so let's look into the next element that we should identify in order to start reporting the results to the user that uses this bot. So as expected, I'm going to run this project now from the terminal and I'm going to make use of this recommendation that we have generated in the print line so we can really have the drivers folder under the path system environment variable. So I'm going to execute those lines and as you can notice, I replaced this path with my original path. So I'm going to run that. And right after that, I'm going to say python run.py exactly like the previous episode. Now, just a reminder, if you remember, I showed some exception by purpose in the end of the last tutorial and I deleted that and it was a zero division error. So make sure that you have deleted this. And then I can go back to our browser and you can see that we have the results as expected and the filtrations and the sorting are pretty much fine. All right, so now we should look into that large element that is responsible to display all the results. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to show how you can see all the 170 results, but we are going to just stick for the first page for the purposes of this tutorial. So that means that we should identify an element that has 25 child elements that are responsible to display all those boxes that are displaying the deal's price, hotel's name and star rating and stuff like that. All right, so let's get started. Now, again, our goal is going to be first to find that parent element that is responsible to display all those 25 boxes boxes that each one of the boxes are responsible as you see to display the hotel's name and star rating and stuff like that. So at first let me try to find the element that is pretty much covering the entire box. So I scrolled up to the first result and let's click here on inspect. And I will do that twice, oh, excuse me about that. And as you can see, this is for example, the title of the first box. And if I scroll up a bit and here, for example, we only see the part that is without the image, which is again, not what we want. We want the entire box. And as you can see, this one is responsible to display the entire box. And if I minimize this element, and you can see that now, if I take my mouse to the second one, then you can see that the second box has been covered with blue background. So this means that those div tags that are having maybe the data score or data hotel ID are what responsible to display each one of the boxes. And you can also see that the parent element of all of those is a div tag with the ID of hotel list inner. Now, before we go ahead and start writing this in the Python side, let me show you some tricks that you could have done in the JavaScript side of the web pages. Now, don't be afraid of JavaScript. I know that this is a programming language that there's a great chance that you did not practice it, but I'm just going to make a short walkthrough how I identified when I developed this project, all of those 25 boxes. So let's go to console. All right. So the console is actually an area that you can execute pure JavaScript code that is going to be responsible to identify each one of the elements that we look for. So if we go to console and we ignore what is going on here and let me zoom in a bit so you can see everything. And I am first going to clean everything in here. So it is going to be clear. And then this is a method that we should execute. So like that, and then you have a clean console. Now to grab all the elements that are responsible to display this page, then we can use the built in document statement. Now this is again from JavaScript. So don't confuse it with Python, but I just want to make a short walkthrough how I identified the elements that I need. So you can execute a method that is pretty much similar like in Selenium and now it is called get element by ID. Now pay attention that E 
B and the I are capitalized. And then I'm going to say here, hotel list underscore inner. And if you remember, this was the ID that is responsible to display all the results. And I'm going to assign this whole expression to a variable. We can name it like um, hotel list. And this is going to be equal to that expression. And you can see that once I click on enter, then you can see that it returns me the element that is responsible to display all those boxes. Now I'm again going to clear the screen and work with the hotel list library. And I mean the variable. And then on top of that, I'm going to execute get elements by class name. So E, B, C, and N are capitalized. And I'm going to find here the class name that is pretty much unique for each box. So I actually found this SR underscore property block string as unique per each box. Now you can see that even before I executed this, it is going to be responsible to give me back 25 elements. So what that means, it means that now we have the control of all those 25 elements that we can work with. So if I press on enter, then you can see that we have a result with 25 elements. So again, this is what we need to do on the selenium side. We should first find that parent element with the hotel list inner ID. And then on top of that, we should go ahead and execute find elements by class name and we should pass in this value. So let's translate what we have done here to Python. And I think that the fact that I showed you this on the JavaScript side is just one more utility that could be useful for you. All right, so we are inside PyCharm, inside the booking.py file. And I'm just going to go down here and type in one more method that we can call it report results. And then inside this method, we are going to say self dot find element by ID and it is going to receive hotel list underscore inner and then on top of that we are going to execute dot find elements by class name and let's actually split the lines so we can have a cleaner look so I'm going to do that in here and this by class name is going to receive as argument sr underscore property underscore block and I need to assign this entire expression to some variable so we can name it hotel underscore boxes this is going to be equal to that one and actually let's test first that this works so I'm just going to say return hotel boxes and I'm going to go to our run.py and I'm going to say print the length of bot dot report results because if you remember this is returning a list and we only like to see the length of this list and of course this should return us 25 and if it is then it means that we are ready to continue on the further actions so i'm just going to go to our terminal and i am again going to execute python run.py and let's wait for the results of that all right, so the filtrations have been applied. Now, if I go to terminal, then you can see that we received 25 back. So this means that we have done a great job receiving all those boxes that are responsible to display data about the deals. All right, so now that we have the control on each of the boxes, then we should somehow try to pull the specific data that we need. And obviously we'd like to start with the hotel's name. So we should find a pattern to get the title of all the 25 deals. So let's try to find this up. So I'm going to open our latest browser and see what is going on here. So let's go to our first box and try to click on inspect. And if you remember, this is under the elements that we have found. So this means that we can iterate over each one of the 25 boxes and we can try to find an element by a class name that is equal to sr dash hotel underscore underscore name so i'm going to remember that and start working on that one now i want to start working on a new file now because we want to have the reporting in a separated python file to basically have more organized project so i'm going to go to the booking directory and i'm going to create a file that we can name this booking underscore report and let's document first what this file is about so this 
file is going to include methods that will parse the specific data that we need from each one of the deal boxes so this explanation is pretty much making sense all right so down here we are going to have a class that is going to be responsible to have some methods that will start to display the data that we need in a nice table so i'm going to start by saying class booking report and then this will not inherit from anything so we are ready to straightforward to receive something inside our constructor now what is making sense the most is probably to receive as a parameter the parent element that is responsible to display all those deal boxes so i'm going to receive as a parameter something like boxes section element and then i'm going to say here self dot boxes section element is equal to that one and then we are going to instantiate an instance of this one and we're going to pass in the element with the id of hotel list inner so let's work on that so i'm going to go here and i'm going to basically go up top and i'm going to use from booking dot booking report import booking report and i'm going to go down and i'm going to say report is equal to booking report and i'm going to pass in the hotel boxes so excuse me for instantiating this before that one it is wrong so i'm going to just fix that and i'm going to just move it and actually replace this with the return because we really don't want this to return anything for now so I'm just going to instantiate it in here and then I'm going to pass in hotel boxes like that. Now I'd actually like to execute this find elements by class name on the booking report side. So I'm just going to cut this from here and only pass in the element with that specific ID. And now let me basically remove this empty line from here. And I think that will be it. So later on, we can basically execute some methods from the booking report class, like, I don't know, um, display table, stuff like that. I know that this method doesn't exist, but I'm just assuming the future of our project. So let me delete that and actually there should be one more area that we should remove everything and this should be this one. So let's also remove the execution from here and continue designing this. All right, so now I'm inside booking.py file and I'm going to just leave everything here as it is and I'm just going to continue working on booking report. Okay, so now that we have an HTML element inside this box section element, then we should go and execute find elements by class name on top of it. So we will have all those 25 elements back. So I'm going to just type in a method that will say pull deal boxes and this will receive self as a parameter and i'm going to say self excuse me this should be self dot boxes section element dot find element by class name and this will have the argument as sr property block and again, this is just going to pull all those 25 elements. And what I want to do now is actually instantiate one more list inside our init method. And I'm just going to say here, return to all the expression in here. And I'm going to say in the init method, self.dealBoxes is equal to pull self.pullDealBoxes. And then we will have control for all the elements under this name, which is making much more sense. And I'm sorry that I missed the S right after find elements. So obviously this should be find elements by class name because we would like to pull all the elements that are matching this class name. All right, so now that we have done this, then again, you might have noticed that we did not have any auto completion about the find elements by class name. And that is because we did not have typing for the box section element. And we are already familiar with this from the seventh episode. So now that is going to be a very similar action to what we have seen previously throughout this series. And it is just going to be importing the typing for the web element class, and then basically use this specific typing. So I'm going to say here, 
from selenium dot web driver dot remote dot web element import web element like that and then i'm going to say that this boxes section element is going to be in kind of web element like that and then we will start having auto completions as expected all right so now that we have done this then let's start pulling in the data that we really need from each one of the boxes and as a great starter we'd like to first pull the hotel name for each one of the boxes and if you remember i said that we have a specific spend tag with this unique class name that says sr hotel underscore underscore name so i'm going to find all the elements with that class name so it will be going back to PyCharm and say something like def pull titles so I can receive self here as a parameter and then I'm going to basically iterate over each one of the boxes so it is going to be for deal box in self dot deal boxes and I will say deal box dot find element by class name and we will paste in the value of the class that we are looking for which is sr dash hotel underscore underscore name and then what we'd like to do with this element is basically pulling its inner html because if you have noticed in here this element has the hotel name inside its inner html which you can really see from here so it is just going to be as easy as saying to that expression something like that so let me first split this to multiple lines and then i can say on top of that dot get attribute and we would like to receive the inner html of that element and if you remember when i use the get attribute inner html i also executed some method that will be responsible to delete all the white spaces and if you remember it was dot strip like that and that will be it this entire expression should really display the hotel's names so let me first assign this entire expression to a variable like hotel name or deal name doesn't really matter and then we can basically try to use here print hotel name and see if that works now if you remember pull titles is not called anywhere so i'm just going to go to booking.py and i'm going to launch the method that we need to report the results in this report results method so it will be report dot pull titles and now let's see what is going on in the run.py file and if you remember we removed the report result section so in that case it should be bot dot report results and i'm just going to leave everything here as it is and now our bot should be responsible to display all the hotels names so if we go to our terminal and say again python run.py then let's see the results and as expected we change the currency we add new york and one adult and we apply the filtrations and we sort the prices and now let's see what we have in the terminal and you can see that we really have all the hotels names we really have everything that we need so we really have here 25 hotels and let's actually see if the sorting matches our convention so the first hotel should be hiat place new york city times square and if we go here you can see that it doesn't quite match and i know the reason for that because sometimes you probably need to refresh after receiving those kind of results and we probably don't want to execute pulling each one of the titles too much fast and i remember that this was a workaround that i applied when i developed this project before i present it to you now so what i'm going to do before pulling the results i'm just going to trigger a refresh to that page so the bot will have a second or two to basically grab the data properly so i'm just going to go to pycharm and I'm going to say here bot dot refresh and this workaround should do the trick. So I'm just going to say here a workaround to let our bot to grab the data properly. 
Now, let me try to execute our bot one more time and see now if it is going to work as expected. Now, I think that the reason it happens, it is because we try to pull the data and the sorting didn't finish its job. So it makes sense to refresh everything before we really try to pull all the titles. So let's just clean the screen and say python run.py and wait again a few seconds. Okay, so now the first hotel is Hotel Edison times square. And if we go to our terminal, and then you can see that the first hotel is Hotel Edison times square, and the second one should be Holiday Inn, and the third one should be Pot times square. So let's verify that. Okay, so I think that now the results are displayed as expected. This refresh really gives our bot a second to breathe and to grab the data in the ordering that we want. All right, so this will close the first part of reporting the results. Now we don't have too much work left here because now it is just a matter of displaying the data the way that we want. So in the next episode, we are going to see how to do this with the pretty table library, which is a great library that outputs data very nice in command line interfaces. So it is going to be wonderful to see how this library is going to be involved in our project. And as usual, if you enjoyed here, please make sure to hit the like button and as well as subscribing to my channel and I will see you very soon.